guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate your life to the next level. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. Hey, it was good to see everyone tonight. You know, um, we've, we've been on this, this Holy Spirit uh, series, and then I, I told you, and I kept my word, I said, the only thing that we haven't talked about is, is tongues. And, and I know that there's so much controversy over that. And so here's what I did. I, I met with my staff like, I think it was like a few weeks ago. And I, and I told them, I said, you know what? I want you to grab a camera and I want you to go film and talk to secular people out there. And just ask them what they think about tongues. Like if, if, if they can, if they could have the, the ability to see th their future, the, the destiny that God has for them. Would they be open to speaking in tongues? And so do you guys want to see the video or should we just another time? Okay, I'm just, uh, let's watch this. Check this out. If you could learn a language that would help you unlock part of your future or help you out with where you're going, uh, would you want to learn it? Uh, yeah, of course I would. When there's someone that speaks another language, I'm intrigued by it because that tells me that it's a different background than mine. Yeah, of course. Have you ever heard of speaking in tongues? I've heard of it, but I don't know what it is. I have, since I was a little <laughs> bit. And there are different opinions on speaking in tongues. Some people think it's of the Holy Spirit, and some people think it's not. Some people are afraid of it. I think the acceptance or not acceptance of someone speaking in tongues depends on culture and depends on um, the, the church that you go to and what you're taught in church. Uh, I, I believe that there are people with, I say, have the gift or that connection in order to be able to do that. I don't think everybody can wake up today and speak in tongues. I think that you have to get a, to a certain level in your spirituality of, of your beliefs and your learnings and your understanding in order to be able to do that, because that, that is a very special thing that someone can do. Uh, I mean, tangentially I've heard of it. I don't, I, I, I've never really known somebody who's been associated with um, that as a practice. I did see recently, I, I walked by uh, an evangelical church where I heard, I walked by and the doors were open and I heard people who were like standing in the pews and they were screaming. I mean, it, it's mystical, and as mm -hmm. you said, some people think it's uh, from the Holy Spirit, and some people think it's uh, a darker mm -hmm. spirit, and mm -hmm. um, I just think it's intriguing, and, you know. One day we'll know. <laughs> one day we'll know. Well, you know, that one day happened 2,000 years ago, and, uh, and, and if you look at today's um, uh, Christianity, there's, there's just so much rejection. There's so much pushback on this, on this subject. But I, I just want to talk to you a little bit. And uh, I promise you I'll, I'll, I'll bring a different angle on this topic tonight. But it's a beautiful thing to be able to speak more than one language, isn't it? How many here speak more than one language here? You speak more than one language. Okay. All right. How many speak three languages? Okay, a few people. Wow. How about four languages? Anybody speak four languages? You speak four languages? Okay. Okay, four languages? Nobody. Okay, so three. I think it's an awesome thing when you can speak several languages. You know what? Um, I remember growing up, if y'all didn't know I'm Hispanic. I know I look Caucasian and everything, but I'm Hispanic. Shock. I know, shock. Uh, but I grew up, I grew up um, in a home where my mom, when she first came to this country, uh, she spoke no English, zero English. And, uh, and so she was challenged with, you know, learning how to speak English. But one thing she, she tried to do was to speak to her kids in Espanol. The problem was that every time my mom would want to speak to us in Spanish, uh, we felt like it was not the coolest thing. Actually, anytime I heard my mom speak Spanish publicly, I got embarrassed. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, Mom, why do you have to talk like that? You know, or, or she would start, you know, talking to me in Spanish. And, and on purpose, I would tell my mom, no speak Spanish, Ma. It's English, America. And, and I would do, and of course, when you're, when you're a youth, sometimes, you know what? Not sometimes. All the time, youth hear this. We're goofy. We're weird when we're youth. And we say things that we don't 
mean uh, or things we don't understand. And, uh, and so, of course, I didn't see the worth or the value of, of learning to speak Spanish. Now, for my mom, you know, what, what she was trying to do was she was trying to, to keep the dialect of our culture so that I can have a bridge to still be connected to my heritage, to be connected of where I come from. And, uh, and, and so that was her intention. She didn't want us to lose our heritage. She wanted to keep the, the, the language alive, uh, Spanish alive, so that, so that as, as I kept getting older, she kept saying, this is going to be a benefit to you, Mauricio. You know what? You're going to have more opportunity if you speak Spanish and English. Man, when you go work at a job, you'll make more money. And so she would try to cast the vision of speaking in Spanish, and I, I rejected it. I didn't want it. I'm not kidding you. I, I didn't learn to speak Spanish until I was like 21 years old. I mean, the only thing I understood was chancla. When my mom brought the chancla, like, chancla, I already like, I knew what that meant. And I knew I was going to get a whooping. Or she would say that the way they are pesquillon. And you know, like a, a, what's that called? Yeah, but, uh, but it's beyond a pinch. <laughs> And, and, and so those, those were words that, that I, I understood. But as, as I began to realize, as, as I began to grow in, in my maturity, I realized, man, this Spanish, it, it, it could really benefit me. Because God started opening doors for me in Latin America. And, and how embarrassing was it when I would have to go there and they'd be like, hey, do you want to preach? And I'd be like... Uh, I, I can't, you know, I'm sorry, I need an interpreter. Oh, we don't have an interpreter. So I, I missed opportunities, God opportunities for me to be able to preach the gospel. So you know what I did? At 21 years old, man, I started watching uh, pure Spanish TV, uh, reading Spanish articles, telling my family only speak to me in Spanish. And as I started just learning my, 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 my native language, right, which comes from my heritage, my culture, uh, I, I began to get better at it, and I began to grow, and I started seeing more opportunities uh, taking place for me. And it, it's so awesome because, think about it, because I was, I was ready and willing, and, and that's the key word, I was ready and willing to begin to learn Spanish. You know what? God opened doors for me. Um, as of this day now, I, I, I meet with dignitaries. I meet with huge government people in Latin America and and I sit in rooms and boardrooms with with different types of government officials God has just opened one door to the next door to the next and it's been just like wow God what was I thinking and why do I share this with you I share this with you because um, I think that this totally applies to the Christianity or the church of today where we have our, our, our heavenly dialect, our heavenly language that God the Father gave his kids, his believers, so that we would not lose the heritage or the kingdom culture that God has given us in order for us to benefit from it here on this earth. Do you know that, that speaking in tongues is obviously so much attacked and it's so controversial because obviously there must be something real about it? I mean, like nobody really argues faith. Nobody really argues serving. Nobody really argues uh, uh, worship. But I'll tell you, they argue speaking in tongues. But God is saying, listen, I, 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 I can't have you. I can't have you lose your, your dialect, your heavenly dialect language. That, that if you lose that dialect, what will end up happening is we will no longer have the bridge from, from today's Christianity to, to, to the, the forefathers who, who started speaking in tongues in the book of Acts. Man, they all came together, the disciples, and they prayed in the Holy Ghost. But have you noticed that the further away that we get away from either 
speaking in tongues or ready to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues, then slowly but surely we will, we will, we will be so far away that we'll forget all the glorious things that God has done in the Gospels. And, and you know what happens? When, when, you, when you don't accept or when you're not ready or when you keep rejecting this dialect, this heavenly language, you know what you're, you and I are really doing? What we're doing is we're literally shutting the door to the next generation of experiencing and encountering the living God. Literally. If I wouldn't have spoken Spanish, guess what? I'd rob my children from that language as well. And God is saying, the reason I need you to be filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost, with the evidence of speaking in tongues, is because God is saying, that is the only thing I have sealed you with so that we don't lose the power that God started this whole thing with. God wants us to be completely engulfed with the fire of the Holy Ghost. Every single one of us. And I know there's people in here that you do know how to pray in tongues, but you don't pray in tongues anymore. Have you noticed the very thing that you stop doing, you lose? What you don't use, you lose. So there was a time where we believed in the laying on the hands. There was a time where we believed in pleading the blood of Jesus. There was a time where we believed in the anointing, but what you don't use, you lose. You not only lose your language, you lose your faith, the language of faith. When was the last time that in your home, mom, dad, there's a language of faith that when something's going down in your family, you guys begin to bring up the word of God and you start speaking, this is the word of God. These are the scriptures that we're standing on. Do you know what? The enemy has come one way, but he's going to flee seven ways. When was the last time? Because what you don't use Have you lost the language of faith? Have you lost the language of sacrifice? You know what, parents, let me tell you something. I know I'm a dog to parents tonight. Because I already got older. Mine's already older, so I can, I can say this, some things. Oh, I'm going to come on. I'm, I'm going to come on. Oh, no, don't worry. Just give me a moment. I'm going to come on. Our kids, parents, be honest, our kids don't understand sacrifice but that's because we have lost the language of explaining to them the importance of the sacrifice for the gospel of Jesus Christ you, you know what's happened with the church we, we, we have become bilingual and, and what I mean by bilingual I don't mean Holy Ghost bilingual I mean we have bilingual word and we have bilingual Oprah In other words, we have half word, half Oprah. Half word, half psychology. Half word, it's bilingual. We have a little bit of this, a little bit of that, but we've lost. We've lost the very language of faith. We've lost the language of commitment. We've lost the language of sacrifice. We've lost the language of passion. People have left this church. Here's why, because they say that pastor is too passionate. I'm thinking, you left the church because I'm too passionate? Are you crazy? <laughs> like, you're bothered because I'm passionate about the same God that we serve together? You're upset now. I get it. We all express God in different ways. But let me tell you something. You want to know what praise is? Praise is not only a language of, of verbal content, but praise is a physical expression that you give to God as well. Amen? I think when you've lost the language of praise, you begin to adopt the language of the world, which is reject and, and be still and, 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 and don't let any weirdness or passion bleed out of you because what are people going to think? Show me a disciple. Show me a man or woman of God in the Bible who were so concerned about what the world thought of them. We cannot lose the language that God has given us. What are we going to pass on to this generation? What are we going to, these are all of our youth here. 
what are we going to pass on to them if we're not giving them a language of faith right now? When they hit troubles, how are they going to, how are they going to resist? How are they going to fight? How are they going to stand? And, and listen, this isn't just for parents. Man, if you're a single person here, you're someone that's been here for a while, and you're not, you're not keeping the language alive, we're losing it. I mean, you can't say we're a church family, but we're doing our own thing. That, that's not church family. Church family is that we all stick, we stick together. And when someone's losing the language, you, you reignite the language back inside of them. Amen. We can't lose the language of healing. You can't lose the language of miracles. Now, I'm not a, I'm not a believer of like miracles, miracles, miracles. No, listen, a miracle is when God needs to step in when there's nothing you and I can do. But when you're just living for miracles, we're lazy. God gave you faith. He never gave you miracles. God does miracles. We exercise faith. And we get so lethargic in our spiritual walk with God. Have you ever felt seasons in your life where you're just like, ugh, you're like, blah. You just, you, you're dragging yourself to church. You're dragging yourself to read your word. You know why? Because we're losing the language of passion. You're losing the language of zeal for God's house. You lose the language for, for commitment and sacrifice. And, 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 and what's sad is that what are we going to show our children? What, 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 what fruit, what, what, what evidence are we going to show them like, man, over here, this is what happened, man, because we had faith. And over here, this is what happened because we had all night prayer. And over here, this is what happened. I mean, we've even lost the language of prayer now. A lot of it is just post on social media, but no one really prays, let's be honest. And that's dangerous, isn't it? Because when you lose the language, you lose yourself. What language do you have in your home? Is it a language of defeat? Is it a language of like, man, I'm dumb, I'm stupid, youth. You got you to gotta be careful with the language. You got to be careful because, you know, the enemy will use your very own words against you. I mean... What you say is what you eat on a daily basis. If you're always saying, I'm stupid, I'm dumb, I'm not worth it. You know what? Guess what? That's how you'll be treated. But that's how you'll view yourself. And then you lose your own self-worth. You, you, got to, you got to come to the place where you have to look at yourself and you have to start speaking the very life of God inside of you guys. Because you guys are awesome, man. You guys are magnificent. You are fearfully and wonderfully made by God. And, and you don't have to wait till you're 18 or 19 to finally say, all right, now I'm going to connect with God. I wish I knew Jesus. How old are you, sweetie? You're 12 years old. That You know that, that at 12 years old, you know that Jesus was already in the church preaching? Come on, girl. Are you ready? Are you ready to step up for God like that? You are for real? Stand up. Let me pray for you. Stand up. Come here. Come over here real quick. Let me pray for you. What's your name? Amaya. Lift your hands to heaven, Amaya. We get an usher over here, it'd be great. <laughs> Amaya, lift your hands to heaven. Come on, stretch your hands out, church. Just stretch your hands out. And so, Father, I thank you for Amaya. And Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus that the baptism of the Holy Spirit would be upon Amaya. Lord, I thank you that when Amaya, when she goes to school, Father, she, she, she is attractive because of the Holy Ghost that lives inside of her. Lord, I thank you that when Amaya goes to, to, to school or, or family events or any location, Father, I thank you that the Spirit of the Lord is heavily upon her, Father. I thank you that the light of Jesus, Lord, just begins to just shine through her life. And, and girls her age and even older will begin to come to her and say, what is it about you, Amaya? Why are you so different? And Amaya will have the courage to speak the language that you've given her, Father God. She's a mighty woman of God, a mighty powerhouse for God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Come on.
on. What if as parents, we spoke to our kids every day like that. We'd have less youth running from God. And you know what? And you may have youth that be like, Dad, that's embarrassing. Don't pray for me here in front of the school. Man, you just, you just, you just, man, as they're walking out, just saying, Jesus' name. <laughs> but eventually they'll come back and say, thanks, Dad. Thanks, Mom. Man, thank you for, thank you for, for building me up. Thank you for not allowing me to lose my language. Huh? You know what language? It's the word of God. When's the last time you speak the word of God? You know what? Let me go to scripture now because we're talking too much now. Y'all ready? Deuteronomy chapter 6. Look at this. Quick, quick. Vamos. Deuteronomy 6. We got to go. It says, verse 4 through 9, it says, now, now please read this with me carefully, okay? Because it's going to speak to your heart. It says, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God. Who do we hear? I'm sorry. Let me say this again. Who do we hear? He says, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with what? All your heart, with all your soul, and with all. And these, I'm sorry, these what? And this language. You got to look at your, at your kids. You got to look at yourself. And you're going to say, Mauricio, you will love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, and with all your strength. Every day, just tell yourself that. Tell your kids that. Amaya, you will love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. And don't forget these words, right? Look what he says. And these words which I commanded you today shall be in your heart. You shall, what? Teach them. Mine says sometimes. You shall teach them sometimes whenever you get a chance, mom, dad, when you feel like it, when you're in church and you leave church. You shall what? Diligently. You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up. Huh? You shall bind them as a sign on your hand and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. Come on. In other words, the word is always in front of me. The word doesn't... You lose the language of the word. Here, let me just say this. We memorize more social media account passwords. We memorize social security numbers. We memorize driver's license numbers. We memorize home address, work address. We memorize all kinds of things, but we can't even memorize the word of God. You know why? Because we lose the language of the word of God. Look what it says. And you shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorpost of your house and on your what? Gates. In other words, you're always keeping the word in front of you. I remember, I don't do this now, but years ago, I remember when, you know, as my kids got older, now they, 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 they have to know how to live out their, 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 their Christian walk. Not on their own, but they have to take responsibility for that faith. But I remember in our house, always, we would have scriptures. And it may have looked ugly. I didn't care. But I would put three by five cards all up in my door. And, and we'd have promises and scriptures that we would read as a family. And, and, and you know what I did is I trained my kids to, to understand the importance of loving the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength. And these are the words that you cannot leave. You know, thank God that today I don't have to remind them to read their Bible. They keep reading their Bible at the age of 23 and the age of 19. I, I love it when I see them open their Bible in the mornings. Why? But it started with not allowing ourselves to lose the language of love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your strength. You can do that. Amen. <laughs> when a language is lost, then there's no bridge to the past of all the things that God does. We start losing, you know, it's, it's, it's what you see today in Christianity. It's just where there's so much disagreement in, in churches and what we believe and, and, and 
You know, what kind of church you go to? Well, I go to Holy Ghost Church. Okay. Or what, what church you? Oh, we go to Contemporary Church. Okay. What church you go to? Go. Oh, we go to a, a church that doesn't believe in worship or, or you know, instruments. Oh, okay. Which, and, and it's just so confusing. We, we, we need to get our language back. Our language of faith. Come on. Our language of passion. I don't got passion, Pastor. Then get one. I don't got sacrifice. Then start one. I don't have a language of commitment, then you know what? Settle down. But let's let's get that language so that our kids are are growing up and 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 we're leaving a church for them behind that they can keep taking on why because we passed on the, the baton of the language and, and we never watered down the Holy Ghost. We never watered down the Word of God. We never watered down the healing power of God. We never watered down prayer. We we don't water it down. That's why we need each other. Amen? Come on. This, we shouldn't wait for a message on the Holy Ghost. We should be walking in the power of the Holy Ghost. Every single one of us. Every single one of us. Together, we're walking in the power. Like now, we're like, oh, I wonder how come pastor's not preaching on the Holy Ghost. Because you're supposed to be living the Holy Ghost life. I don't have to preach to tell you what you should be doing. We should already be so filled with the Holy Ghost that, man, it's my language. Because my language becomes my culture and my culture becomes my language. That's my language. That's what we talk in this place. Are you guys getting this tonight? Is this too strong? No, are you guys sad now? No? Look at this. I'm, I'm going to give you another uh, uh, proof of this. We have to remember that we have the, the, the most refreshing, life-giving word, right? And it transforms us. Look at what 2 Timothy 1.5 says. It says, when, now this is, this is Paul, okay? Check this out. This is so awesome. He says, now when I call to remembrance the, the, the genuine what? The genuine what? Okay, notice he didn't talk about, man, your genuine, your genuine you know, it, uh, uh, talent or your genuine personality or your genuine job. No, he says, man, when I remember, I, 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 I'm, I'm remembering right now the genuine faith that is in you. Look at this. Which dwelt first in your who? Grandmother. Let me see all the grandmas in the house. Any grandmas in the house? Wave your hand if you're a grandma. Amen. Grandmas, you're important. Okay. But look at this. Look, which do, some of you don't even want to raise your hand at your grandma. You're like, heck no. no I, ain't, I ain't a grandma. Okay, no worries. Okay. You'll, you'll, you'll arrive one day there. Okay, a genuine faith that is in you, which draw first in your grandma, Lois, and your mother, Eunice. Look at this. From grandma to mom, and I am persuaded, is now also in who? You. You see how grandma started by passing the generation? She started teaching the language to Eunice. And then Eunice was like, man, I'm going to teach what my mom taught me. I'm going to teach my kids. And my kids are going to grow up. And faith's going to be inside of them. And then they're going to train and teach their kids. And then you know what? You don't lose a whole generation. We keep, we keep empowering the next generation to the next generation to the next generation. So that one day we don't wake up and then have a church that's powerless. We need a powerful church. Now, why, why do we need this language, this heavenly language? Let me read you Jude 20 real quick. Jude 20. It says, but you, beloved, building yourselves up on your most what? Holy faith. Praying in the what? Holy Spirit. Okay, so, so he says, this is how you build up yourself in the most purest form of faith. Like, like, like the kind of faith. That is so pure that, man, it keeps you in your ways. Praying in the Holy Spirit. Your spiritual language is the only way you're ever going to wage your warfare in life. You need the spiritual language. When you, when you read Ephesians 6 and when it talks about the armor of God and, it, and, and then it goes through all the armor. Do you know, do you know what the last thing that he, that he says in that, in that chapter? He says, always praying in the spirit. So he literally puts the bow at the end. He says, if, listen, the, the armor is no good unless the spirit is behind it. In other words, you, you got, that's just, that's just tools. But the spirit brings the tools to life. 
So when the fiery dart comes, guess what? The spirit of God begins to give you the spirit of the shield of faith. The spirit of God begins to give you the strength to bring out the word of God. All of a sudden, you know what? I don't think any of us here are too intelligent to memorize all of the word, right? But guess what? By the spirit, man, you will supernaturally begin to memorize scriptures and you won't even know how you did that. I mean, you would, I was a horrible student in, in elementary, junior high, high school. It was bad. But the moment I started reading the word and I just became so hungry for this, it was amazing. I couldn't memorize anything for lick. But then I started opening this word. Man, I'm telling you, I've mem mem memorized over hundreds of scriptures and it's just in my spirit. How do I do that, man? It's the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit. So he says, you pray in the Spirit. Number one, let me give you a point. And we're going to baptize some people tonight. Number one, let me give you some points. Praying in tongues empowers you to engage spiritual warfare from the position of victory. Look at what Ephesians 6.18 says. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. So there's a English language and then there's a spirit language. We need the spirit language awakened. Number two, praying in tongues gives you supernatural understanding of God's mysteries. In other words, there are things that you're trying to figure out right now in, in your own earthly language. You're praying to God. You even ran out of words to pray. You know, you've been praying the same prayer and you're not seeing any results. But let me tell you something. Look at what um, 1 Corinthians 14 2 says. It says, for he who speaks in tongue does not speak to men but he speaks to who god for no one understands him so i know that there's such a a conflict about you know what should you be praying in tongues in church or not i thought there's supposed to be an interpreter no listen let's let's clarify some things first of all first of all if anyone were to stand up here and start going man you better you better know by faith god told you that there's an interpreter in the house because if no one interprets what you just did Ooh, you in trouble. I will stop and look at you and be like, okay, now interpret it. <laughs> what did God just say? Okay, so, so, so there's, there's those moments where, where someone does pray in the spirit, but then someone interprets what was just uh, prayed in the spirit. And, and, and so that's when that happens in church. But when, we, when I say, let's all pray in the spirit, you know what? It's to edify you. It's not for the rest of the people. But how awkward, because people are always arguing, you're not supposed to pray in tongues in church. That's like saying, well, you're not supposed to pray in English in church either. That would be awkward. What do you mean I can't pray in English in church? I mean, if someone told you that, you'd be offended. Like, what? I can't pray in English? So why can't you pray in the Spirit? It's your other language. It's like me praying in Spanish. If I want to pray in Spanish, I'll pray in Spanish right now. Who's going to stop me? Seriously, who, I mean, if I want to pray in Spanish, I'll pray in Spanish. If I want to pray in English, I'll pray in English. If I want to pray in the Spirit, I'm praying for me. I'm edifying me. It's for the edification of you. And, and listen, there are things that you can get with, with your native language prayer life, but there are only things God can give you with your spiritual language prayer life. That's why he says he will unveil mysteries. He'll show you things that you don't even know. Man, he'll reveal things to you. Number three, here's a better way. You know, when you pray in the Holy Ghost, it's like using Google. It really is. You know, when, you, when you're using Google, it's because you don't know what you're looking for or you can't even find it. Well, guess what? When you pray in the Holy Ghost, he's better than Google because he doesn't error. He knows exactly what you need. Okay, number three, praying in tongues grants you access to other revelatory gifts of the Holy Spirit. And the verse is 1 Corinthians 12. It says, for to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit, to another the word of knowledge through the same Spirit, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another different kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. You know what I'm saying? In other words, you can be praying in the Spirit yourself. And if you really desire, and it takes development, you can pray in the Spirit and actually interpret what you're praying. You can. You can totally interpret that. And, and I get this is the type of things that we don't get to hear much, but we don't want to lose this amazing language. Okay? And look at this. So 
there's interpretation. So praying in tongues actually unlocks other revelatory gifts that you and I need. It unlocks it. God will give you a word of wisdom for someone, a word of knowledge. When someone comes to you for counsel, you know, it won't be Mauricio's counsel. It will be the Holy Spirit inspired counsel where I give you the word you need for that hour. Come on. When, when I go to people, I pray and hope that they can give me the answer right there on the spot because they got it from the Spirit. Amen. Number four, praying in tongues opens up the Bible in a new living way as you read it. It really does. You know, you can read it like a book. And you, I'll tell you, most people, they tell me when they read their Bible, they get sleepy. Right? But man, I'll tell you, but when you pray in tongues and you begin to read the Bible, it just, it opens up a whole new world. Right here in uh, John 16, 13, it says, however, when he, the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak. Man, I'll tell you. This, this Bible, even today before I came to church, I went and I sat at, at a coffee shop. And I was just reading. I had already finished my message and everything. And I was just reading. And, man, things are just dropping in my spirit. I'm like, wow, this is pretty powerful. And, and just new things. I wanted to come here and preach them, but it's not the message for tonight. Number five, when praying in tongues, you are speaking directly to God. 1 Corinthians 14, 2 says, for he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men but to God. Guys, we have to remember that even though you may be filled with the Holy Ghost, which everyone is once you receive Christ, but then the evidence is speaking in other tongues. In other words, you, you need to not lose your heavenly language. As a matter of fact, our heavenly language should be our first language, not the second or third. It should be the first thing. We pray in the Holy Ghost. Why? Because the Holy Ghost is going to keep us in all truth. When we lose the Holy Spirit, we start falling into lies. When we stay in the Holy Spirit, we stay in God's truth. Have you noticed that? When you, when you, when you stay a person that's always speaking faith, you always stay in faith. When you're a person who's always speaking negativity, you live in the place of negativity. Life and death is in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit. Come on, we have to make sure that we stay, stay with the language of heaven. Bow your head, close your eyes. Father, you guys, youth, you guys can go take off. Actually, no, don't take off, because some of you may get baptized tonight with the Holy Ghost. Um, Father, I, I thank you. I thank you that tonight that we are reminded that we're not going to lose our language of faith, our language of passion, commitment, sacrifice. We're not going to lose our spiritual language, Father. I thank you that tonight we, we want everything that you offer in this word, Father. We don't want to lose not one benefit. Lord, I thank you that as people get baptized tonight with the Holy Ghost, that something awakens inside of them, Father God, that, that the Spirit of God begins to show them the mysteries, the secret things, Father, that you have for their personal life. Lord, I thank you. I thank you that, that there is no spirit of confusion, but there's only a spirit of peace and understanding and revelation by the Holy Spirit. And so, Lord, I thank you that tonight as people get baptized with their heavenly language, Father. I thank you they're entering a new dimension of faith, a new dimension of, of, of fellowship and connection with you, Father. I thank you there'll be a, a, even a season right now of refreshing in their spirit, their soul, and their body. I thank you, Father, that even as we see in science, Father God, in this world, as, as, as secular organizations have, have, have research speaking in tongues, they have found that it also brings physical healing. And so, Lord, we pray tonight that those who want to receive the baptism of your Holy Spirit would be activated in their heavenly language. In Jesus' name, amen. If you're here tonight and you've never, maybe you've never, ever have spoken in tongues. Now, now let me tell you something. These are some things that people have said in the past. Well, if I, if I pray in tongues... That's me speaking. <laughs> well, guess what? You're right. It obviously isn't anyone else. It's you. It's you speaking. Yes, it's you. But, but, but check this out. But as you begin with you, it ends with him. 
So it always starts with you. I gave my life to Christ. It started with me saying, I receive you. But it ended with his transformation in my life. So, so yes, is it going to be you right now? Yes. You're going to begin to make a, a groan like the Bible says when you're baptized. You, you not only begin to utter a sound out of you. For some people it's different. I've shared this before. Uh, a, a really great pastor, Pastor Frederick Price, you know, big on faith. I remember when he said, uh, when I first started uh, speaking in tongues, he said, I used to, I used to just pray Hyundai, 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 Hyundai. Should have bought a Honda, but I bought a Hyundai. You know, it's like, that's when Hyundai used to suck. Now they're awesome. They're, now you should buy a Hyundai, not a Honda, you know. But, because you get 10 years of war. I'm just, but, but, but you know what he said? He said, he said, that's, that's, that's where I started. He says, but, but it went from that, from, from just feeling like obnoxiousness, like, man, this is me, to like, it became so real. And, and then all of a sudden, you know what you do? It, it's just like this. I, I always tell our worship team this. You know what? You're, the reason you're not confident yet is because you haven't found your voice yet. When you find your voice, now you'll lead with confidence. Well, guess what? Once you find and, and you discover your spiritual language, then you'll begin to see your spiritual confidence in God. It changes, I'm telling you. Because you're no longer, you're no longer just praying anything Bible says in Romans 8, when you pray, you pray the perfect prayer. Perfect. And guess what? You're an imperfect person. But the Holy Spirit is perfect. So when you pray in the Spirit, everything he's praying is perfect and he's interceding for you. So with that said, youth, I'm telling you, you'll think different. You'll, you'll live different. You'll, you'll, you'll have a desire. If you just have had no desire for God, all of a sudden as you're praying in the spirit, this desire awakens inside of you. And you're just like, man, I want to know God. I'm telling you, it's, it's supernatural. It's, not, it, it's, it's weird at first, but let me tell you something. You're already weird, all of you. You know, so might as well just add a little bit more weirdness. And then it becomes so amazing and it changes your life. Your weirdness doesn't change you, but God, he changes you. And so I, I want to encourage you, if you want to get baptized with the Holy Ghost, when I make the call, which I'm going to do right now in about 30 seconds, if you're here and you're saying, I want this baptism, I want my heavenly language. I don't want to miss out on my benefit. At the count of three, you'll stand up and you'll walk up here. And the Bible says this, you lay hands. That's what Paul did. He said we would lay hands on the people and we would pray and boom, they'd all be activated with their heavenly language. And it was a beautiful thing. And let me tell you something. It's a powerful tool. It's the way you're going to engage in your spiritual warfare. There's, there's wars that you're going to go through in life that your, your, your native language doesn't have the umph to pray through that. But your spiritual language has been created to be the most amazing weapon of choice when you're in the spirit battle of your life, I promise you. When you don't know what to pray, you don't know what you ought to pray. The Spirit prays the perfect prayer. So if that's you and you're saying, I want that, Pastor. At the count of three, just lift your hand high. I'm going to pray for you quickly. If that's you. You're saying, I want that spiritual language. Anyone here at all? How many pray in tongues already? You pray in the Spirit. Okay, awesome. That's all. How many do not pray in the Holy Ghost? You're just like, man, this is new. That's awesome. I love that. I love that. If you guys want that, no pressure. But you just meet me right up here. And, and I'll lead you guys through a quick prayer. And then... Man, we'll do this together. If anyone here wants to receive that, you don't have to be afraid. It's a beautiful thing. It's our heavenly language. Don't, don't lose the language that God has given us. Anyone here at all? You're saying, I want, I want the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Anyone here at all? You can just stand up. Come on up here. Just come on up here. You just come on up. Yeah, come on up. Yeah. Give me my water, please. Thank you. Awesome. I love that. That's so cool. Just stand right up here. Thank you, sir. Those of you that do pray in the Spirit, would you please stand? Those of you that you do pray in the Spirit, let me encourage you guys. Only you know you very well. And you know whether or not you've been praying in the Spirit or not. Just because you know how to pray in the spirit doesn't mean that you have been praying in the spirit 
And, and, and without even knowing, you can already be losing. Losing in life. Losing in faith. Losing in breakthroughs. Why? Because the language has been given in order for us to do our part so that God can do his part. But when you're, when you're just standing in the midst of the storm and you're not praying and engaging in this battle with your spiritual language, you're delaying God's answer. You need to pray in the Holy Ghost. You need to. You cannot, you cannot just use the Holy Ghost when you're in trouble. You pray in the Holy Ghost daily. Daily I pray in the Spirit. I pray more in the Spirit than I do in English. You got to pray more in the Spirit than you do in your native language. Why? Because every single day God wants to help you uncover or discover something about you or something about them. He's also the discerner. He'll help you discern where you should be, where you shouldn't be, who you should hook up with, who you shouldn't hook up. He'll, he'll show you when your kids are doing crazy stuff, he'll reveal it to you. This week, I found out something on my own and I just got like, Dad, did you pray? And I'm like, yup. He's like, I knew it, man, I knew it. Because every time Isaac got caught, it was when I prayed in the spirit. And I just come to him, Isaac, here's what God told me. And he just looked at me with these, these big old eyeballs like, how'd you know? Where are you at, Isaac? Isaac, what's he doing across the street? Get him over here, please. Alexis, yes or no? <laughs> Say it real quick, sure. <laughs> he prays in the spirit and we think we can get away with things or they're even great things and he just, the Holy Spirit reveals to him. Okay, can you be a little bit more like growing I mean, up as a kid? Okay, growing up as a kid, I mean, I never really was a bad kid to be honest with you. <laughs> I can tell you so many stories about Isaac. <laughs> how many How many have heard that one before? <laughs> Or like my grades, for example, like I try to hide like I got a B or something. And he's like, mm, let me check your report card. He already knew. Yeah. No, but I'm, t I'm telling you, Isaac's the one that got caught all the time. He was, he was, yeah. Oh, no. And I want him to share because all the time, like nonstop. Like he'd always be like, Dad, how did you, how did you, like did so, someone told him, like, yeah, someone told me. His name is the Holy Spirit. He told me, bro, so watch it. Because he's not exposing you. He wants to help you. Amen. The Holy Spirit doesn't shame. The Holy Spirit heals. Amen. Hey, Isaac, come here. <laughs> Hurry up. We got to go. Come on up. Hey, so when you were a kid and when you were hiding, <laughs> when you would hide stuff from me, who would tell me? Oh, the Holy Spirit. <laughs> <laughs> like he'd be showering and he just gets out of the shower. He's telling me what happened at school. <laughs> Like, yeah, it's no lie, the Holy Spirit. <laughs> How many times did that happen? Oh, my God. Like, even, <laughs> even now. <laughs> <laughs> this week it happened, too, again, right? Yeah, this he week. He started laughing. He started laughing. He's like, man. But it was good. I didn't do anything. <laughs> yeah, good. it was good. All right, thank you so much, bud. Whose is this? Yours? Awesome. The Holy Spirit will reveal. But see, how you treat him is how he treats you. You treat him like whatever, he'll be like, okay, whatever. He won't treat you as in like whatever, you know, not like he doesn't do what you and I do to him. No, he'll just be like, okay, whatever. If that's what you want, then okay. When you're ready, come see me. Amen? Okay, so all of you that pray in the spirit, start praying in the spirit right now, please. Just start praying in the spirit. Close your eyes so you're not distracted. Pray in the spirit. And then all of you that are up here, look at me. The rest are praying in the spirit. You guys look at me. And you guys pray for these people in the spirit. Just put your attention on them, but pray in the spirit as if you were praying for them. You don't know what you're praying, but the spirit of God does. Praying in the spirit is like faith. When, you, when you're believing God for something, you're having to believe him for something that doesn't exist. The Bible says that, Faith is calling those things that are not as though they were. In other words, right now, you don't have the language. But faith says, but I desire this language. And God says, okay, you want this language? You want this language? You want this language? 
Do you want this? Then he says, okay, then you desire it. And by faith, you're going to receive this language. So I begin to utter out by faith my language. And then God puts his seasoning on that language. God begins to anoint that language. God begins to touch that tongue because we speak with a tongue, don't we? When we speak in English or Spanish, we're speaking our tongue is being used. Well, guess what? When God, when God fills you with the baptism of the Holy Ghost, the tongue of the Spirit is already in you. It just hasn't been active. You guys can let go of each other. That, that way, this is you and Him right now. No need to be afraid. This is you and God right now. And so the tongue is released. And when the tongue is released, here's what begins to happen. Man, all of a sudden, it goes from you to like, wow, you I, some of you are going to feel this, and I'm going to forewarn you right now. Some of you are going to feel this overwhelming peace, like your light. Others of you are going to feel like this fire, like you're going to start feeling very, this heat. Uh, and some of you, you're automatically just going to be, boom, you're literally going to see white light. And it's not because there's lights here, okay? You're literally going to see white light. And I promise you, that's what's going to happen right now. So all of you up here start with this. I know we're going a little bit over, but church, this is a Holy Ghost time. We're not going to put God on a timer. We're going to be like, you know, Lord, you're doing something here. Amen? Is God doing something here or not? Then let's all be in agreement. Amen? Don't be like, ah, ah. No, don't lose, don't lose, don't lose the language of commitment. Lord, I'm here for you. Do something in me too. And so here's what I want you to do. All of you that are up here, I want you to pray with me. Pray this with me. Say, Heavenly Father, I receive my heavenly language. Youth, if you want to receive this, you come up here too, okay, youth? You say, Holy Spirit, I know you live in me. And I desire my language, my spiritual language, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Tonight, I receive it by faith. I believe it with my heart. And I pray over my tongue. I pray a releasing of my language in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Come on, say, Lord, I receive it by faith. It's my language. Come on, as we begin to lay hands on you, I want you just to begin to utter a sound. Just begin to utter a sound. Sherele bakasondo. Come on, just lead them. If you're going to pray for them, prayer team, lead them then. Pray right now. Just begin to, just whatever sound, just show taraba kasanda. Go ahead, start praying. This is in a moment of, of, of falling out. Look at me. Look at me. Just begin to, just utter a sound. Go ahead. Close your eyes so you don't think in your head. Think in your heart. Just say, just keep going. You got it. Keep going. Now go ahead. Baptize them, Father. Just go. Go ahead. You got it. Pray. There you go. There you go. Keep going. Keep going. There you go. Thank you. There you go. Release it right there. There you go. Give it volume. There you go. You got it. We baptize them, Father. We baptize them, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for their heavenly language. Come on. Just keep praying. Don't stop. Don't stop. Don't stop. Just begin to utter all the sound. Sherry Bakasondra. Go ahead. Lora Kasata.
peace of God in this room. It's just, just peace, right? Yeah. Like there's just this wave of peace. Ma'am, I, I don't know you, but are you dealing with sickness, disease? Okay. Uh, God, God clearly showed me that, that you need healing. Whatever disease that is eating up your body is, is, is going to be withered. It, we're, we're cutting that tonight. And so, you see, that's how the Holy Spirit works. He reveals. Not because he exposes you, embarrasses you. You know why? Because he loves you. God loves you. God loves you. God's not, God's not talking about your past. God wants to talk about your future. God's not moved by yesterday. God's moved by tomorrow. And today is the beginning of your yesterday when you met God. In other words, God stopped everything just for you right now. Thank you, Jesus. God has the name above cancer. God has the name above any name. In heaven and on earth. And so, do you believe that, that God can do this tonight? Okay, stand to your feet. Come over here. What, what sickness are you dealing with? Breast cancer. Okay, cancer. Yeah. Yeah. I, I knew it was that. I, I, the Holy Spirit, I knew that. By the Spirit of God. However, I want you to know that tonight will be a very significant night. You will go through battles, but you won't be alone now. And, and God is a miracle working God. So this room right now, the atmosphere is for miracles. Now I know why God had me saying, okay, who's going to set up the atmosphere for miracles? And people are like, I will. I, this is why. This, it was this moment. This moment. And so breast cancer has to bow to the name of Jesus. It has to. It has to. It must. But first, you need to bow down to the name of Jesus. In other words, you got to come to the end of you and say, you know, God, I, I surrender. I give up. I mean, if this isn't enough to get you to believe, I don't know what will. You know what I'm saying? And so I want to start by, by praying with you, and I want you, are you ready to invite the greatest love in your life? There will be no greater love than him. No one. No one can fulfill you but him. I want you to pray this with me. Say, and I want you to mean it, okay? This is your moment. Don't miss out on your moment. Come on. I want you to see God himself loving you. Say, Jesus, I invite you in my life, in my heart, in my mind, in my body. Jesus, save me. Heal me. Forgive me of all my sins. Every one of them. Every one of them. Tonight, Tonight, I have realized, I have realized how, much you love me, how much you love me. How much you're for me. How much you're for me. And not against me. And not against me. Forgive me, God. Forgive me, God. For being angry. For being angry. Disappointed. Disappointed with, you. with you. Forgive me. Forgive me. I love you. I love you. I trust you. I trust you. With sickness. Or without sickness. Or without. I trust you. I trust you. I love you. I love you. Cancer. Cancer. I will no longer. I will no longer. 
idolize you, worship you, or be pitied by you. Today, tonight, I receive the healing power of God, the resurrection life, Jesus, my healer, my deliverer, my freedom, my joy, my peace. Today, I'm born again, filled with your Holy Spirit and life. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Now, let's pray for your healing. Pastor Tim, come on up here. Help me out. Thank you, Jesus. Can we get a microphone for Pastor Tim? What's your name? I'm sorry, I didn't even get your name. Angela. Angela Mauricio. Very nice to meet you. Um, Pastor is Pastor Tim is someone that I I truly love, and when he prays, he prays the heart of the Father. And we're going to pray and agree right now. The Bible says that when two or three are gathered together, and there's more than two or three here, he says, I'm right there with them. And so I want us to pray real quick. And church, would you all stretch out your hands? Let's all pray together, please. Go ahead. Father, we thank you for our new sister in the kingdom here. We thank you, Lord, that there's no sickness and disease in the kingdom of God. Jesus Christ, according to Galatians 3.13, has redeemed us from the curse of the law of sin and death. Cancer is part of the curse of the law of sin and death, but she's been redeemed. Yes, Lord. The blood of Jesus has purchased her out of darkness and brought her into light. Yeah. Oh and Father, God, cancer can't it. abide in the light. No. So, Father, we rebuke that lying devil, that cancer in the name of Jesus. We command it to leave this body, yeah, the temple of the Holy Ghost. And Father, we have a confident and favorable expectation that you will honor your word. Thank you, Jesus. Father, healing is the children's bread. And Father, we just stand and agree you, that Jesus was wounded for her transgressions yeah. and bruised for her iniquities. That the chastisement that was needful for the obtaining of her peace and well-being was placed upon you. Therefore, by your stripes... We declare and agree together that she is healed in, yes, the name of Jesus. in the name of Jesus. And Father, we glorify Thank you. You. you said answered prayer glorifies yes. the Father. Yeah. And we wish to glorify the Father. And we know we pray according to your will. And you said if we ask anything according to your will, yeah. then we know that you hear us. And if you hear us, then we have the petitions of you that we yeah. desire. You said to Thank call you, for the elders of the church yes. to Thank pray you. for the sick and they will recover. Yeah. So, Father, we worship you and thank you, yes. Father, for being thank faithful you, to your word. Yeah. Just joy. Faithful to thank your you, word. Father. Just joy. And, Father, I believe my sister will testify. Yes, yes she will. When she receives the manifestation and she'll yes. be a source of encouragement for yes. others. Yes. You'll do that, right? Yes. Encourage others. Of course. And, Father, we just thank you, Father. We need another testimony of the faithfulness of our healing God in the yes. earth, Father. Here she is. Thank you, Father. Thank Be you, glorified Father. in yes. Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Here, here, here's what's going to start happening. Uh, not only are you going to get that physical healing, but God is starting with your emotional healing tonight. And... And I don't know who's betrayed you. I don't know who's ripped your heart out of you. But I'll tell you this much. The Lord is with you. And he is the mender of hearts. And so tonight, your heart is no longer yours. Say it with me. It's not my heart. Not my heart. Say, Jesus, it's your heart. Jesus, it's your heart. Come on, give it to him. Tell him, Jesus, I give you my heart. Jesus, I give you my heart. I give you my life. I give you my life. I'm not mine anymore. Amen. Awesome. Awesome. God bless you, Angela. God bless you. God bless you. Awesome. Awesome. You know, uh, let's not move or leave. Uh, there's a young lady over here that I want to talk to real quick, and then we'll get out of here. How you doing? Good. Can you
can you come here for a second? I, I promise you it won't freak you out. I want you to know something. God is removing this, and, and I have to just call it what it is, depression. I don't know what, what, what you deal with. I don't know if you've ever been a cutter or you're constantly tormented by, by thoughts, but there's this depression that just constantly tries to grip you. Like you, you try your hardest to be happy, but you just find yourself short and you just can't seem to just, you can't find happiness in anything. And you've tried relationships and unhappy and you've tried uh, things you enjoy doing and you're still, in, you're always finding yourself short. But God's saying tonight, if you are willing and ready, God's saying, daughter, tonight you can find the only thing you need. And God gives not temporary healing, not temporary joy, not temporary comfort. He gives eternal joy, eternal comfort. Come on, he gives eternal blessings. But you have to come to the place where you're willing and ready to say, okay, God, I really haven't tried you. I've tried everything but you. Does this make sense to you? Does it? Do you deal with depression? You just constantly feel just sad? Is this a constant thing like a cycle with you? It is? Okay. That's called depression. That means that it's like a deep press, right? There's a constant press and a press, and it's like a cloud that just follows you. Remember Charlie Brown? Remember the guy with the cloud? What's his name? You're probably too young to even remember that, huh? <laughs> Yeah, she's like, yeah, oh my God, yeah, yeah. Um, well, there's this, there's this, this character, and anybody know know that that character? Who is it? Pigpen. Pig Pigpen. Okay, Pigpen, and Pigpen walks around with just constant cloud, just this oppression, just always sad. But God is lifting that off of you tonight. Are you ready? What's your name? Christina. Christina. Nice to meet you, Mauricio. Awesome. Lift your hands to heaven, Christina. Like, do you have Christ in your life? You do? Okay, awesome. Let's, let's just pray this for me because, Christina, tonight life changes for you. Are you ready? I want you to just let go and relax. Just let go and relax. Just rest now. No more tense. No more being tense. I want you to just experience the Father's love right now. Come on, don't worry about who's in this room. Just, just surrender. Just surrender your, your mind, your heart. Just surrender your weight, the, the worry, whatever you've been thinking about. Just say, God, I give it to you. Father, I thank you for your daughter. And Lord, I thank you that you're breaking the spirit of depression over her life. Satan, we bind you in the name of Jesus. You will not have this young lady. She is God's property. And so, Father, I thank you that after tonight, this woman will experience, Father God, your presence in new ways. I thank you, Father God, that she realizes that she needs to continue to develop this relationship with you. I pray, Father, that tonight she has the revelation that all she needs is you. She doesn't need anything of anything. She doesn't need more friends. She needs more Jesus. She doesn't need uh, uh, more, more activities. She needs more Jesus. And you, I promise you that when you find him, you'll find you. And tonight, you have found him. And so, Lord, we receive her healing by faith. Say with me, I receive my healing. Say, close your eyes and just say, Jesus, I receive my healing. Jesus, I receive my healing. It's, mine. it's mine. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for, saving me. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for loving me. You're, mine. You're mine. And I'm yours. And I'm yours. In, Jesus name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Awesome. How do you feel? Yeah? Honestly. You do? You feel like God just touched your life? Yeah. That's awesome. Well, God bless you. Very nice to meet you, okay? Thank you. Thanks. All right, let's go and have a seat, guys, and let's get everybody out of here. Come on, have a seat. After you. After you. Thanks. Awesome. Well, it's, it's about that time. What do you guys think? It's like you don't want to go home, but you have to go home, huh? Can we just wait for a moment before we do anything? Our youth are going to the, the youth building so that they're ready for their parents. You know what's pretty cool is that a lot of youth got baptized with the Holy Ghost. Little, even little kids were over here. And, and uh, 
man, they're just praying in the spirit. It's pretty amazing. I love it. And you know what I saw all throughout here? There was not one dry eye up here at this altar. I just saw tears streaming down everyone's eyes. You know what? There's nothing that we can do in our, in our, in our own wisdom, our own strength. That's the spirit of God. He's called the spirit of comfort. And I believe he was comforting. He was even healing people. People were getting baptized but being healed at the same time. And, uh, and I thank God for Angela. Yeah. I thank God that God stopped the service for an Angela. Amen. So when you guys think about Angela, you pray for her. Amen. You just say, Lord, we receive it for her. Are you kidding me? And every time you see Angela come to church, I'm not sure if, if she lives. Do you live here in this city? Where are you from? Okay, well, guess what? You got a new family here, girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is, this is, this is your home. We welcome you. Yeah. We want to see your healing breakthrough. Yeah. And we're all going to be praying, right, y'all? Don't lie, you're going to pray every day, but when you think of Angela, pray. Right? Yeah, I'll be praying for you. Don't, don't lie. Just say, it. I'm praying. Just when you think of Angela, pray. Yeah, anything you see, a bushy tail or pink, anything pink. Anything that was pink, you're like, Angela. Everybody say, Angela. Okay, so anytime you see anything pink anywhere, you'd be like, okay, Lord, thank you for Angela's healing in Jesus' name. Amen? Okay. Thank you. This is for who? For you? Well, what, what was the problem? Hepatitis C. Four years you've had hepatitis C? So this is this is the doctor's report, uh, Northeast Valley Health Corporation. This is uh, the, the report for the analysis I did up here. I have 20, negative. 23, no, positive. Yeah, positive here and negative here. Million yeah. The virus. Come on, that is awesome. That is awesome. And let me tell you, <laughs> you know what? That is awesome, Romulo. Romulo is a Holy Ghost praying man. If you ever see this guy, he's always praying in the spirit or he's just wild worshiping God. But now you know why. Because if God can heal him of hepatitis C, God can heal you of cancer. Amen. Amen. A brand new liver. Come on. Amen. Thank you so much, Romulo, for sharing that. I appreciate that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Amen. Well, listen, we're going to get out of here. Um, just close your eyes for a minute. Come on, just say thank you, Father, for tonight. Thank you for meeting me tonight. Jesus' name. Father, I pray for every single person, Father, to give them sweet sleep, rest. I thank you, Father, that we will not lose our language of faith. We will not lose our language of the Holy Spirit. We will not lose the language of healing and miracle. We will not lose that language. It is your promise. And so, Father, I thank you that tonight... All of us, including myself, have been reignited with this language that we'll never, ever let go of. It'll be the daily walk, the daily talk. Because the just shall live by faith. In Jesus' name, amen. If today's message impacted you in any way and you want to help us spread the gospel with a financial gift, text the number below. And we know that someone's life will be changed the same way that yours was today.